Welcome to How to Use Text Speech with Phonic Academy. Hey guys, as my incredibly elaborate intro suggested, we're going to take a look at something unusual today. And that plugin is called Plug Chip Speech. Now, what uh, they're trying to do here, they're trying to emulate the really old fashioned speech synthesis generators. And uh, we're going to have a look at the user interface. We're going to have a look at what they've tried to emulate here. And also, we're going to have a look at the plugin in use. Uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that yet. I mean, historically, a lot of these kinds of uh, speech synthesizers were used in techno. Um, but he's he's tried to emulate various different forms of speech synthesis here. If you have a quick flick through the manual, I might just put some of those up on the uh, screen there. They've given a bit of information about what he's tried to emulate, um, what they were used in, and then some links to Wikipedia pages. So have a look at the manual um, for those links. It's quite interesting read, you know, if you're into that kind of thing. But basically, we've got um, on the user interface here, we've got several different um, algorithms to try and emulate a number of different speech synthesis engines. Now, these aren't based on samples. They're based on something I believe called allophones, and they're using synthesis to try and emulate the way that we speak. So you've got your plosives and your sibilants, and then they use noise to create those and various filters to create the way that, to create an emulation of the way that we um, actually use words. So, um, You'll notice here that you've got the option to input English or Japanese text. Now, the way I understand it is that you can only use English or Japanese because these algorithms were designed to try and understand how we speak. And in, in order to do that, there's going to be some kind of contextual reading of what you're typing into the, uh, the synthesis engine and how it will pronounce certain words and how it will speak complete sentences. So just going through this quickly, um, we've got a voicing option, we've got a circuit bending option, and we've got a talker option. Uh, voicing, if we just choose the first voice here, Bert Gortrax, um, as I tap some keys on my keyboard here, you'll see that the each time I tap a note down, it's following individual words in this sentence. And actually, let me just correct myself. It's not following words, it's following syllables. So a note pressed won't um, sound out the entire word. It's going to sound out a syllable. So one, two, three, four. And then we get to belong. Um, each time you press a note down and let go of a note, it's going to uh, sound out one syllable. Okay. In fact, if I just show you what I'm doing with the notes here. Where Down here. Let's do that again. So this this little red blob indicates me pressing a note down. Okay. Note on. Note off. Note on. Off. On. Off. On. Off. So on off is B. Another on off is long. So something worth noticing here is that the pronunciation and the sounding of the words is also note off sensitive. So if we go to, for example, bass, as I hold the note down, you're getting the bay part. And as I let go of the note, you're getting the, the, the second part of that syllable. So let's go through that again. Note on, and then listen to what happens when I note off. Okay, so it sounds a bit tedious, but it's, it's important that you understand how it's um, working these things out. Because when you start using... Uh, your piano roll to construct sentences. Uh, you have to kind of keep that in mind. Now, if I hold a note down and then hold another note down, like legato style, it won't actually switch on to the next syllable of the next word. So you have to have a note off message to the plugin for it to switch over to the next syllable. Okay, so we've got several voice synthesis algorithms. And all these things were used for different um, uses back in the day. Uh, obviously, you've got the famous things like Stephen Hawking. You've got the Texas Instruments speak and spell toy game thing. Um, Texas Instruments, I believe, a long time ago, had a personal computer with the same speech synthesis engine built into it. And it was also used on a lot of older arcade games like 
Gorf, and I think there was one called Berserk. So a lot of these old arcade games, they didn't have they didn't have the ability to sample voices, so they used these um, synth engines. And then a bit later on, we had stuff like um, there was a there was one in the Atari ST, which was like the early nineties. Was it late eighties? Late eighties, no, early nineties. The Atari ST had a speech synthesis engine built into it, which was used a lot in old techno tracks like um, Das Boot, that U ninety six thing. And then Pet Shop Boys used it as well in the 80s. Jesus, I'm old. And also later on, Dead Mouse. Sometimes things get complicated. If you know that phrase, that was a speech synthesis engine as well. So tons and tons of different uses over the years. Um, but you can do some quite cool, interesting stuff with this. A lot of it has become quite cliche and overused. But the reason I wanted to have a look at this plugin is that this allows you to delve a little bit deeper in terms of control and also allows you to play it polyphonically. So we can do this thing. If I come up here to this mono button. And you've got modulation there as well, which you couldn't do back in the day, but also pitched as well. So instead of it just being, you can. So you can actually play melody with it as well, which was something you couldn't do back then. So you got a lot more option with this one. Uh, so let's just have another look at these voices. Where were we? D-clat. Uh, some of them are more um, understandable and intelligible, intelligible, I can't even say it, than others. They've created this Lady Parsec HD as well. I believe this is something that the developer created himself. And I don't know about you, but that reminds me of the robot in, what was it called? Portal. Portal, which is quite a cool voice. And then I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember the Stacker Humanoid track, uh, which was, no, probably not, probably 30, maybe 30 years ago. It's like an Amiga demo. Um, but that's that kind of voice. Humanoid. That's the Atari ST one, so you might recognize that from some old techno tracks. That's very repetitive. So yeah, there's, there's tons of different algorithms to choose from. And just quickly, while we're having a look at, looking at the, the voicing options, um, these selections here, they're going to give you the ability to use MIDI notes to uh, sound out syllables, individual syllables of words. You've also got a circuit bending uh, selection of choices here. And what this does, it attempts to recreate the way that people have modded these speech engines. If you have a look on eBay, and if you type in circuit bent speak and spell, you'll see a load of these old speak and spell toys with like wires hanging out of them and extra knobs and controls put on. Um, just a quick note, these ones with KS in brackets, these are presets specifically for the native instruments NKS format. So there's actually key switching built into the UI of NKS, which isn't something I have here, but it's worth noting that if you do have an NKS keyboard, you might want to try these ones out because there's some key switching involved in the way that this plugin works as well. Uh, so let's have a quick look at the, let's have a look at the TSI bending. You'll see that the user interface changes a bit. And what it allows you to do is, for example, let me just press a note down. So this is going through all of the words in that particular algorithm. Um, there was a chess game that used this speech engine as well. And obviously this looks like a calculator. And what you can do is you can use this knob here, which is a CC MIDI control knob to select uh, different words from its vocabulary. Minor, 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 minor. Uh, let me just switch loop off. Minor, minor. Minus, that's supposed to be. Time. I mean, some of these weren't great, let's be honest. Time. 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 That's all there is in that Time. one. So that's a calculator, evil robot. That's actually a bit, works a bit better higher up the keyboard. And then coming down to these controls here, you've obviously got loop. And this is this is part of the uh, the circuit bending like culture. What you can also do is let's find a longer word. In fact, let's just go to a different algorithm. Let's try TMS. Flying. 
Yeah, okay, let's try this. Okay, so this is obviously a video game called Parsec. Um, what you can also do, so I'm jumping around this, there's so much to see on this plugin, I'm going to jump around a bit, but I'm not going to apologize for that. As you hear the words now, they're very, very robotic. To begin. But what they did try to do um, back in the day, they had pitch data built into the algorithms to try and emulate the way that we kind of intonate words. So if I switch this on. To begin. To begin. So they're, they're trying to make it like more the way we speak when we use tone to to imply meaning Aspire to begin. and then obviously uh coming down to this loop section that we were just in and i jumped out of you can loop this Aspire to begin. Aspire to begin. which may or may not be useful and you've also got the ability to freeze the algorithm where it currently is so Aspire. Aspire. Aspire to begin. okay so that might be useful uh, something I just want to do quickly is oh, I've already got a limiter on there. Sometimes this this plugin can get quite loud, so I've just thrown a limiter on that. That's the only reason it's there. And you can start playing with the loop start and end points as well, or sorry, loop length. And this is another uh, circuit bending trick that they use all the time. And this can sound good or just weird. That's fire. <laughs> Yeah, you get that kind of thing, and that, that really can get loud. But, 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 if we, for example, let's grab something like a Replica. I don't think I've got a full license for XT, so let's just pull down the Replica and pick, you know, something weird. Uh, when you start messing with the loop point, the loop start point, and throwing that through some effects, it can sound quite cool. <laughs> Like that. Let me just turn that down because that gets really loud. Uh, mix. Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, and then finally, we've got. Let me just switch this off. So you've got the, you know, voicing is the syllables. Circuit bending is the, you know, weird modded stuff. And then talker, the talker other algorithm. You've got the same voicing um, options here. Uh, but this time, instead of it sounding out a syllable, you can sound out entire sentences. So let me just... Uh... And again, some of them are more intelligible and understandable and useful than others. Let's put the effects back on. Okay. Um, when you're using the talker algorithm, you've actually got the inflection level here. Um, which allows you to add or remove that implied pitched, um, you know, inflection to give some meaning to the voice. So if we have this down at zero, it's going to be very robotic. And then up at 200%, it's going to sound like a very, very hammy actor. That kind of thing. What's Lady Parsec? So yeah, there's most of the options in terms of voicing and what it is and why it was invented in the first place. Uh, we're going to go through a couple of videos. Um, we're going to look at the controls in depth. There's quite a lot to look at here because the way that automation is handled is quite unusual. Um, you can do a little bit of a work around in Ableton because Ableton, just the way Ableton works, uh, but you need to look at the way that the modulation works for other doors because you might not be able to do the same thing as you can with Ableton. And then we're going to try, I'm still not sure what I'm going to do yet, but we're going to try and use it in a track situation. So I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please We'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.